Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zillow Tech, and every year with the introduction of a new version of iOS, Apple introduces hundreds of new features, and this year is no exception. We have an all new design, we have about 130 features that have been found so far, maybe more, and some of those features unfortunately are not available for older devices. So I thought we'd go over every iOS 26 feature not available on older devices and what they are. Now, the first thing is liquid glass is the new design that we have across all of the devices. So even if you have an iPhone 11 that we have here, the oldest supported device, it still actually has liquid glass design. But the first feature that's not available has to do with some photo options. If we go into photos within photos, you'll see here's a picture I took of Apple Park at the visitor center. If we tap on it, we have a new option in the upper right to allow for sort of a spatial scene out of that photo. It analyzes the photo and then makes it 3D. So you can move it around, you can see depth, or at least it looks like you can see depth. You just don't have that option on the iPhone 11. In fact, this option is only available on the iPhone 12 and newer. So there's just no option when you go and tap on it here. You can see we can actually turn it off by tapping on the little icon here, turn it back on, and now we have a spatial scene that makes it look 3D. You can do this with any photo on iPhone 12 or newer. So that's something you don't get, and this carries across to the lock screen as well. So if we go to the lock screen, you'll see as we're setting a new wallpaper on the lock screen, we have this icon here on the iPhone 16 Pro Max tap on it and now we have the spatial scene being generated for the lock screen itself so if you want to use that again you'll need an iphone 12 or newer so if you set it like this give it a second we'll just customize it here turn off the blur and now you'll see if we go to the lock screen it actually has this spatial photo. So it works on the lock screen, but once you go home, it sort of just locks into place. But that gives you an idea that it will work. But again, iPhone 12 and newer. Now, another feature that's limited based on the device that you have is if we go into messages, if we go into messages, we have these new backgrounds and those aren't limited to older devices. But one thing that is, is if we go to change the background, you'll see that we now have suggestions from Apple intelligence. So we can now use image playground to generate a background. So it's giving some suggestions here, and this is limited to Apple intelligence devices, which means the iPhone 15 pro 15 pro max and newer. So if we want to describe a scene here, we could say maybe waves in the ocean and have it generate that and it should create a background. So give it just a moment. It will create that and then we can set it as a background to our messages. So it's generated it. We'll go ahead and hit the little check mark here. Give it a moment. It is a little bit slow currently. There we go. And then we can have that as our background. So again, there we go. It's generating it. Again, taking a little bit of time, but now we have that as our background. So I changed it and now it will work across all of my devices in sync. Again, you can still use the background images, but they're limited for Apple intelligence options on iPhone 15 pro and newer. Something else within messages that's limited is if we go into here and go into polls, we have suggested polls. Those suggested polls are limited again to Apple intelligence devices. You can still utilize polls within the messaging app. So you'll see on the iPhone 11, we have the option for polls. It's just suggestions for polls that are limited. So that's a slight change there. And another thing that's limited to Apple intelligence devices is live translation. This is something that's new that works across the phone. It works across FaceTime and messages as well. So let me show you that using the phone app. So when you receive a phone call, you have some options in the bottom left and you'll see we have a new option for live translation. So it can translate. So if we go into this, we can translate from Spanish to English or from English to French, German, Portuguese, or Spanish. So these are new options now. I imagine they'll add additional languages in the future, but you'll be able to use live translation across multiple apps. You can speak in English. The person on the other end will hear you in their native language. If the other person is speaking in Spanish, you'll hear them speak in Spanish, then it will translate it for you in real time. So this is something that's great. We've seen these on other phones for a while, and now it's available on iPhone. Again, though, this is limited to specific devices, iPhone 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max, and newer. So you will need that Apple intelligence update in order to do that. The same is true with the shortcuts app. If we go into shortcuts, we have some new options here. Now, of course we have shortcuts on the iPhone 11 as well. So if we go into shortcuts here, and if maybe we go into our library or our gallery rather, 
Within the gallery, give it just a moment here, and you'll see we have new Apple Intelligence-based shortcuts. If we go into this, we then have some options for action items from meeting notes, haiku, leftover recipes, and it says use a model to summarize the open PDF in Safari. Again, these are limited to Apple Intelligence devices, so you'll be able to use shortcuts still, but just not the Apple Intelligence-based shortcuts. So document review, reminders roulette, getting started with language models. So you can use a language model, have a morning summary and more. So again, iPhone 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max and newer. Within Apple Wallet, there's a feature that's been there for a while, but just has been underutilized since different companies aren't really working with Apple on this. If we go into Wallet and within Wallet in the upper right, if we tap the menu here, we have orders. Orders is something we've had for a while, but now it utilizes Apple intelligence on the iPhone 15 Pro and newer to allow you to see more about the orders that are on your device. It's private on the device, finds it in your emails, gives you information about the orders, and then maybe tracking, shipping information, and more. Before, different sellers had to actually allow them to do this. Now they're just utilizing Apple intelligence to find relevant information on your device and give you that information. You don't have to use it, but again, it's all private on device. There's also a new option coming soon where you can add your passport to your iPhone to allow you to use it for an ID card, maybe when you're traveling within the United States. But this is on all iPhones, but limited to the United States to start. So just like we have many of the different driver's licenses in some of the states, this is limited to states that participate as well as the United States for the passport option. Within reminders, there's an update here where you'll see I have a list. We can now go to the menu in the upper right and we have a new Apple intelligence based option for auto categorize. If we tap on this, it will automatically categorize the list that I have here based on the overall devices. So you'll see connectivity and internet, photography, accessories, camera equipment, and it auto categorized this. There's also auto suggestions as well. And these features are again, Apple intelligence based. So they're limited to country as well as iPhone 15 pro and 15 pro max and newer. So you won't have this on older devices, unfortunately, but you don't have to use it, but you will have auto suggestion options as well. Now, if we go into photos and we'll take a screenshot of this photo I took at Apple park, we'll go ahead and take a screenshot. We have an all new screenshot interface. However, if you have a visual intelligence supporting device, so again, iPhone 15 pro 15 pro max or newer, we have a couple additional options down here so we can do an image search and see what it finds. It'll do that with Google and it finds that it's Apple park visitor center. If we scroll down, we could look up the plant that it recognizes here. So it's looking at it and it tells us what it is, or we could ask a question as in, where is this? And then it will go out to chat GPT and then find that information. So give it just a moment. It says working and it says this location appears to be part of the Apple park campus in Cupertino, California. So based off the architectural style, it recognizes it. So that's indeed where it is. It's Apple park visitor center. And if we zoom out, you can see where that is. So it recognizes that and you can utilize that on iPhone 15 pro 15 pro max and newer. Another thing that's on Apple intelligence supported devices is image playground. Image playground has some updates. So if we want to generate a new image, we now can generate that through chat GPT and more. Of course, you'll need an iPhone 15 pro 15 pro max or newer to support those features. So we could say a Ferrari by the sea on the beach and see what it generates here. So if you use anything outside chat GPT, it won't allow you to do that. But with chat GPT, it will generate a realistic image based on what you describe. You can use apples, which is more cartoony, or you could use chat GPT to generate, generate this and also pick from different styles here as well. So we have anime, print, watercolor, oil painting, vector, or any style that you describe. So again, we'll give it just a moment and see what it comes up with. So you'll see, it looks like it generated a Ferrari Testarossa, maybe a 512 TR here on the beach. And you can see what that looks like. So it gives us the option to generate something realistic if we want or change the style altogether, maybe to anime or something else. Aside from the features I've already mentioned, Apple also updated a few accessibility features, and I wanted to talk about compatibility there. If we go into settings and then accessibility, you'll see on the iPhone 11, we're not going to have all of the same things. While we do have head tracking, we don't have eye tracking, which is on iPhone 12 and later. So that's limited to those devices. 
the same is true for personal voice. So if we scroll down here, you'll see personal voice is on iPhone 12 and later. And the same is true here for music haptics as well. So if we scroll up a little bit, you'll see that we have music haptics on the iPhone 16 Pro Max, but again, not the iPhone 11. So same sort of updates as last year, but they even updated them more this year, but you won't have be able to use them on iPhone 11. If you have an iPhone 12 and later though, you'll have those options. So that's everything supported so far with iOS 26. Most features are available. The design change is available, the animations and everything else, but just the features I mentioned are specific mostly to iPhone 12 and newer or iPhone 15 pro 15 pro max and newer if it's Apple intelligence based. So let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Which phone do you have? And are you trying out iOS 26? I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.